Sculpted type is a technique that is widely used in branding design today. Let's talk about it. Before the invention of movable type, illustrated manuscripts featured hand-rendered lettering and embellished capitals. Hand typography was as free and as beautiful as its creators could make it. Although Gutenberg's invention of movable type allowed more books to be printed, type was limited to flat baselines with letters all the same height. Early on, drop caps and embellished capitals were developed for printing, but the baselines remained flat. Over the years, the appetite rose for customized, or as I like to call it, sculpted type with nonlinear baselines and flourishes. The beauty of what I call sculpted type, nonlinear baselines, along with flourishes and swashes, is even more impressive when we consider that this typography was rendered by hand. With the advent of the desktop computer, every designer has become a de facto typesetter, although with many of Gutenberg's original limitations. However, we now have digital tools for creating word marks with nonlinear baselines that Gutenberg didn't have. With hand skills, even if digitally executed, one can produce excellent sculpted type for a wide variety of applications, including branding design. Both Photoshop and Illustrator, and other similar software counterparts, have type warp tools for doing this. Unfortunately, some of these type warp tools do not respect individual letters being only mathematical algorithms applied on whole words. The best practitioners of sculpted type tend not to use these tools, and I strongly recommend against them also. Instead, designers can achieve much better results by changing individual letters with the shear tool and fine-tuning letters by moving vector anchor points individually. Note that with the exception of the splayed arc, the verticals in each letter remain vertical. Text warp tools don't do that so well in some of these configurations. Flourishes and swashes, visual processing technique number six, are frequent welcome additions to sculpted type. This approach can be particularly effective in wordmark design to evoke associations either with old-fashioned nostalgia or futuristic mystique. Sculpted type is popular with several sectors of identity design. For instance, music bands, especially in the heavy metal genre, often use sculpted type for their identities. Unfortunately, it is surprising how often legibility will be sacrificed for some perceived cool factor. Illustrated here are mostly legible samples. Others are nearly impossible to read. It almost seems as though the designs are manifesting the nihilistic sentiments these groups seem to both espouse and engender, and are almost daring the reader to understand the wordmark. If so, they are defeating a wordmark's very purpose. Certain segments of the book industry, especially in the fantasy genre, make use of sculpted type. Note how these do not lack for personality, and yet, are far more legible overall than the identities for bands. Restaurant identities often employ sculpted type as a way to show fun, entertainment, old-fashioned values. Sculpted type is a favorite of the beverage industry for both alcoholic and non-alcoholic products. The food industry is a heavy user of this technique. Many artists don't even start with existing fonts and most do not use type warp tools. Instead, product word marks are often hand-drawn and highly customized and rendered in vector. Sculpted type has probably entered the subconscious of all of us. Many of us begin our days looking at sculpted type on the breakfast table without even thinking about it. Sculpted type is here to stay. It's not what's needed for all word marks, but when it works well, it is a remarkable technique. Sculpted type is the tenth of the ten visual techniques for logo design. To review, they are containment, planar or silhouette, fragmentation, unique coincidence, linear treatment, 
ligature swashes and flourishes, negative shapes, essence, system of shapes, and sculpted type. They are techniques that can work with all three identity components, word marks, logos, and monograms. They also work with any of the four conceptual approaches, corporate activity, corporate ideals, corporate name, and abstract. This list of 10 individual techniques is different than the list of the seven deadly sins of logo design. With that list, you needed to learn and recognize and avoid those things because any one of them will always make a logo not work in some fundamental way that all logos should be able to work. It may take some practice to review and learn the seven deadly sins of logo design, but all you have to do is avoid those things. This list of 10 visual techniques is different. It is not enough to just recognize them. One must actually gain some skills in each of them and learn to use them. This will not happen instantly and it will take some work. But these are the kinds of skills that a branding designer needs to have ready for any task. This is where the artistry of logo design happens. You may need to review these 10 visual techniques with every new branding design project. But rest assured, these various skills are learnable and they do bear fruit. For more information, go to logodesigntheory.com. If you found this helpful, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and share this with anyone who needs to know more about logo design.